Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, once again, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for your grace upon our lives. We thank you for bringing us to the blessing and the breaking of a new day. Lord, we say your name indeed be exalted in our lives in Jesus' name. And as we go to hear from you this morning, Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to see those things you want us to see. We also plead with you, Lord, that you open our ears to hear those things you want us to hear. And at the end, all glory be returned back unto thee, and blessings be our portion. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. Once again, I welcome us to the breaking of another day. Today, Friday, June 4, 2021. And um, the text we are to consider this morning is taken from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by St. John, beginning at the 19th verse. John chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. Now, this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed. He says, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, Who then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, I am not. Then they said to him, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now those who were sent were from the Pharisees. And they asked him, saying, why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophets. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stand one among you, whom you do not know. It is he who coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. These things were done in Bethbara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptized. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The topic before us this morning is titled John Bears Witness About Jesus. John Bears Witness About Jesus. Looking at the text read, we could see that it was between John the Baptist and the priest sent to him. Of course, not only the priests, but also the Jews. They were together and they went to John the Baptist. And the Bible says when they got to him, they asked him, Who exactly are you? Who exactly are you? Now he looked at them and with all humility, he said to them, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Of course, one would have expected that John would seize this opportunity to actually raise his ego. John will seize this opportunity to bring himself high a bit. But the Bible says that his response was, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. He was simply telling them that yes, he was a servant. He was just a messenger sent to bring the gospel of Christ to the world. And of course, we could see this between the two parties. Now he confessed in verse 20, the Bible says he confessed and did not deny, but confessed. He says, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? 
what do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Well, this was an opportunity for John the Baptist. As this is exactly what God is expecting us today to do. The Bible says he sees this opportunity to minister God and even Christ to these people. And very quickly, I want us to go to the devotion, which is titled, John Bears Witness About Jesus. Now, John the Baptist was gradually becoming popular and could have claimed to be the Messiah, but he remained committed to turning the people's attention to the one whose sandal strap he was unworthy to untie. I want us to note that word. He turned the people's attention to Jesus, the Messiah. He referred the people to Jesus as the Messiah who was to come even after him. Brethren, today we have so many ministers, we have so many preachers, and today we could see that instead of them to refer people or to turn the hearts of men towards Jesus, they are turning the heart of men towards themselves. How have you been handling the gospel of God today? Of course, there is no doubt about it, that when you have the nature of God in you, when you have the characteristics of God in you, there is every possibility that men will locate you. There is every possibility that men will come close to you, just as they went close to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist did well by returning or by turning their attention to Christ. He did well by referring them to the one and only Messiah. He did well by telling them about the qualities of Jesus, about what Jesus is coming to do. And of course, in this particular place, the Bible says he told them, he said, this trap I am not worthy to untie. He said he has been preferred even above me. Brethren, today God is also expecting such from us. When people come close to us, the God is expecting that you turn the heart of men towards him. How have you been handling the gospel today? The Jews sent priests and Levites to John the Baptist to ascertain if he was the Christ. He, however, made it clear that his ministry was that of a servant. I want us to also note this as well. The Bible, the, the devotion this morning says he made it clear. He made it clear to them that his ministry was that of a servant. The Bible says he was a forerunner of Jesus. He came before Jesus to prepare the way. He came before Jesus to announce the coming of the Messiah. He came before Jesus to turn the heart of men towards God. He came before Jesus to pronounce the arrival, to announce the coming of the Messiah. And so he was telling the people, and of course we could see that the nature of his work is just like that of a servant. It's just like that of a servant, announcing the arrival of his master. Brethren, once again, how have you been handling the gospel in your own care? I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And also he says, announcing the arrival of the master and preparing the people to receive him. Now in verse 23, John applied the prophecy of Isaiah and of course to his own ministry of calling people to repent in preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Now the disposition of our hearts as witnesses should be that of humility. Brethren, this is what God is expecting from us. This is what is expected of us as children of God. God has placed, uh, commissioned us to this ministry. And so what is expected of us is to refer men to Christ, is to turn the heart of men to God. And of course, John did well by referring people to God in the passage read to us. John did well by calling the attention of men to God. John did well by saying, no, it is not me. It is God. John did well by saying, no, I am not the Messiah. The Messiah is still to come. Who sander I am even unworthy to untie? And who is preferred even before me? Of course, we could see this in the life of John the Baptist. Brethren, the truth of the matter is that God is using you. There is no doubt about it. God 
has used you for so many people. There is no doubt about you. But when they come back to you, how do you handle it? Have you been referring men to God? Have you been doing what is expected of you? Now we go further. He says, when we truly understand who Christ is, our pride and self-importance will melt away. So this is telling us that the reason why people had ego or pride to their life today is because they don't understand God. It's because they've not encountered Jesus. Even Jesus himself was humble. Not just humble alone. The Bible says that it was so hard for those that came to card for those that came to captivate Jesus, for those that came to kill Jesus or to, to render Jesus captive at that moment could not recognize Jesus. They were it took them, it took the keys of Judas Iscariot for them to recognize Jesus. Brethren, how is pride in your life today? Is pride well pronounced in your life? Is pride well announced in your own life? Irrespective of what God is using you to do in your various places. Brethren, please refer men to God. Yes, you were there for them when they had nothing. Yes, you counseled them when they were devastated. But please still refer men to Christ. There is this thing that God has given to us. There is a man, once you have a gift like that, there is every tendency that men will come to you. When you have a gift, when you have a calling, there is every tendency that men will come close to you. But the question is, have you been referring them to God? just as John the Baptist? Have you been doing the needful just as John the Baptist? You can't sell them when they were devastated. God has done a lot of miracles through you. God has done a lot of things, healings through you. But how far have you gone? How far have you been taking them? So these are the things God wants us to ponder on even as we go ahead in today's activities. So when we truly understand who Christ is, our pride and self-importance will melt away. This call should remind us that we all have our calling and ministry to fulfill. And like John, we should not allow people to distract us from what God has called us to do in our daily lives, in our homes, places of work, and in the church. Brethren, the truth of the matter is that the devil knows exactly what you can achieve. The devil knows exactly what God has committed to your care. The devil knows exactly how far you can go. And so the devil has actually placed so many things to make you lose focus. He has placed so many things to distract us. And one of those things is self egocentricity. One of those things is self assertiveness. One of those things is pride. Devil has positioned all these things to make us lose focus. But we should look at the life of John the Baptist today. John the Baptist did well. He humbled himself even to the last. And of course, he referred men to Christ. Today, God wants us to humble ourselves. He wants us to refer men to God. Whatever it is God is using you to do at your various places, don't forget to make them know that it has been God all the way. Don't forget to leave them know that God has given you the wisdom. Don't forget to make them know that the money you have, it is actually not of you, it is from God. And I pray that as we do so, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Also don't forget that we are to witness for Christ and bring people to him. We are to witness for Christ and bring people to him. We are not witnessing for ourselves. We are not witnessing for anybody. We are not even witnessing for the leaders. We are witnessing for the one and only that have sent us on this errand, which is God. So witness about Christ today and God himself will be happy with us. I pray that indeed the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. The prayer is thank you, almighty God, for sending John the Baptist as a witness for Christ, help us to emulate a spirit of dedication and humility. Amen. Let us pray. Father, once again, we thank you this morning. We appreciate you for your grace. We thank you for everything you have done, most especially your word you sent to us this morning. We ask that your word will heal our soul, and we ask that you help us to do as expected, and at the end, 
your kingdom will be our portion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.